really high tendency to run double AP comps. So banging out Nar not really gonna hurt them with Hauntzer. Very happy to play any AP champion up top. Yeah. Maokai already the mouse over for him. Yeah, he's locked that one in actually, and hopefully he picks the right Maokai skin because haunting Maokai would be ideal with a champion name like that or a player name like this, but that's been locked up there for Hauntzer in the top lane. Interesting, a uh, couple of pinches went on here though because you're, you've dropped out a couple of top tier junglers, and in fact, that was picked up by Impaler. The Lissandra already grabbed as well by Chris. Mm, quick pick up there. Yeah, I like early picking Lissandra just because she's so flexible and can go to either lane. That's uh, true. Mid or top. And Jarvan doesn't give anything away. Jarvan, really high priority uh, for a lot of junglers right now just because of the, his ability to create early plays. Medios was going full tank build at all of IEM San Jose, and it worked out really well for him as well. Uh, yeah. His use of the Cataclysm as well as, you know, just providing those buffs to the rest of his team was definitely a big part of their success. Yeah, and especially because we're seeing less and less top lane tanks, right? We're seeing Maokai's, but like not many Boondos, not almost any Alistair's as well. So Tank Jarvan is fine because you've got Rumble and stuff in there who are actually providing damage from the top lane. The Lucian does come out though, and the Thresh does go to Bunny Fufu. And I really do like the changes to the tank item for junglers. It makes that a lot more viable. Now it just gives you that flat 500 HP once again rather than the old uh, changes that they gave up to the Spirit Stone type tank yeah. items where you had to give up more health after that. It took a long time to come online. Now you get instant gratification when you complete it. Yeah, and the but, jungle items are super efficient too, right? You get a whole lot of value for gold because you can only buy it on a jungler. It kind of like bridges the gap that junglers don't get a whole lot of gold normally. Blitzcrank though, coming out for sheep. I think that's how it's gonna beat up Bunny Fufu. Nice, hooks versus hooks here. So anytime you see Blitzcrank, in solo queue, you're thinking, oh, early invade. Yeah. <laughs> Just because <laughs> he's extremely strong there. But um, Lissandra is also really good for early invades, too. And Ezreal does a decent job as well. So maybe we'll see Coast trying to get off to a good early start here. That's true. They've got so many ways to check brushes, so many ways to poke out without getting really caught. And in fact, most of them can just get away if something does go wrong. So. And it's a like really start. it's a really big part of preseason. I feel like that some teams have been missing out on is getting early vision on where your opponent jungler starts can be yeah. huge because the respawn timers on the camps are so long. You can really uh, map out their movements for a very very long time after that and get some good early countering. Like you said, Impaler was looking at St. vicious runes and saw a lot of scaling, so maybe they want to get that early vision and take advantage of him. Well, speaking of taking advantage, though, St. Vicious is on, is on one of the safest junglers <laughs> yeah, in this pack, though. Pantheon comes out, blocking, like, every auto attack. Pantheon. And again, 4.20 is yeah. high attack speed, a lot of shields. 4.20 Pantheon is, is a very strong champion. It's just really versatile because it not only gives you that early dragon threat that everyone loves to talk about, right. which is, you know, may or may not be worth it depending on how long it's going to take you to uh, take it down, mm -hmm. but his gank pressure is insane. And as you said, being able to block auto attacks in the current jungle is so much more valuable than it used to be. He can stay a lot higher health. Well, it's going to see how this one's going to go, though. Speaking of high health, though, a bunch of assassins have come through. Zed here for Keen and Ari for Jesses. So uh, very high damage mid lane going to bring people's health bars down. And it's going to be pretty volatile. Both these junglers are very good at ganking early on. They're notorious for their early ganks, in fact. And uh, just a very volatile matchup here in the mid lane. Yeah, this matchup uh, is really, really skill-based, Ari and Zed. And if you do have, you know, Saint and Paler come and try and mess that up, uh, that can easily snowball for the rest of the game. Jez's signature champion here, Ari, that he's, you know, played since the beginning. Mm -hmm. And we do uh, get to see what split-pushing Zeds can do if they get an early lead, as we've seen in the last couple of series. Yeah. They can Still even have. Scary. They can even come back, even if your team is extremely far behind. Always oh, sure. have that in your pocket. Go with the high style uh, uh, secret missions, trying to split push on the sides. See if you can make that happen. What interests me as well, though, is is how Coast play their pick and ban because they're playing one of the eight typical AD carries. Ezreal, we have not seen very much of. Typically, the AD carry tier list is okay. It's Lucian and Thresh. Yeah. Sorry, Lucian, sorry, Lucian and Corky, and then like everyone else. And these guys banned Corky, let Lucian go through, like, no worries. They basically could guarantee that Kappa's going to pick that champion and said, look, we'll give you the Thresh, we'll give you the Lucian. We're going to play this other entirely different lane of uncommon champions. And uh -huh. I want to see if that's actually, like, the secret counterpick. There's, like, some special reason why Ezreal Blitz is the lane here. So Ghost. I don't think it's, like, a, it's a secret counterpick here. I've seen, actually, quite a few people have Ezreal as their backup behind the top two. Um, it's, it's just been coming back in popularity because... Uh, you can go with so many different builds with him. And as you're saying, with uh, Blitzcrank, they have a lot of mobility here. Yeah, pretty good early power specs. Now, guys, if you want to join the conversation, if you're tired of just us talking, you can always tweet out at LOL Esports, hashtag LCS expansion. 
sent a few myself. You guys, you know, keep tuning in, keep chiming in with what you think is going to happen in these games. And we thought about the action so far, but we're getting ourselves into the game here. Game one in the second best of five of the day. Winner plays against Team Fusion for a spot in the North American LCS. Losers got to place, uh, sorry, face off against Final Five to stay alive in this bracket. And here we go. All right, we are going to see that early action we expected from Curse. A Blitzcrank uh, leading the way right into the ward. All right, so maybe not too much gained right here. And yeah, St. Vicious pops his drink down, and everyone's going to be nice and happy. So, didn't work on the top slide. Goes going to run to the bottom side instead. Still got plenty of ways to check brushes. In fact, Arya joins that, uh, that group, so every single person here can toss up into a brush and get feedback on if someone's there or not. Yeah, perfect defensive line of Trinket Wards here for... Uh, Curse Academy already though, so any invade will be seen. See if they can actually turn anything around though. Lane swap coming in, Thresh and Lucian going up top. Some people just really don't like laning against Blitzcrank. The other yeah. thing is that Lissandra can beat up on Malachi. <laughs> That's true, actually. It's a pretty good matchup here, and I've seen it played a couple of times. If you guys are watching OGN, we tend to see those top laners a whole bunch throughout that series and throughout that, uh, that league, I should say. But we're going to see how this pans out anyway. Coast are going to send their bot lane to the bottom lane, and the Curse Academy duo goes top, so lane swap going to happen. Now we're going to see what these teams do in a lane swap itself, and if either team actually saw that it was happening. Ooh, so uh, from a lot of top lane Maokais, we've seen this start actually just fully sapling, stalking the Wraith camp or the Raptor camp or the Razor Beast. Yep. Uh, whatever you want, because it, it will instantly explode the small ones, which do most of the damage. So it's pretty easy level two instantly for Maokai there. Uh, meanwhile, Lissandra stuck with the double jungle style, following Impaler Ooh. around, and Sheep steals the red. Well, hold on, though. We're going to watch on this one, though. You're kind of giving us a bit of a spoiler there. Sheep does get it early, smite by St. Vicious. Yeah. Well, that's a good start there for this one. Early smites, I mean... You want the cooldown back, of course, because it's uh, a fairly dangerous jungle and your smite uptime is important, but that was without ward coverage. Really good play by Sheep. Yeah. talking. We talked about the early wards in the jungle here, and they snuck that one into the back of the red. Blitzcrank, playmaker. All right, so Jess is now has a, a good amount of safety there. He knows St. Vicious is going to be underleveled. No red buff for himself either. And, uh, you know, Haunts are also sucking up experience. Like, Saint's still level one here. Other than that, just the regular lane swap. Everybody following around, which leads the mid laners by themselves. And Jez is getting a, a nice early shove here on Zed, trying to pressure him up against his turret. Now, as a mid laner, uh, when you are facing lane swaps in the team, then you have to ward up like he just did on the top side, where the enemies have their duo, because that's where the control is for everybody, and you don't want to be susceptible to those three-man ganks mid. Yeah, it's true. There's so many like cool reasons why. It's like... Not only does the jungler tend to stay on the top side jungle in the first place, but it's also it's where the supports roam down to, and it's just the right choice here. So, yep, Sheep and Impaler doing a good job juggling aggro back and forth. Sheep even gets an auto attack down every time, just to make sure like he's maximizing DPS. This dragon will eventually release soon and heal slightly. It might just roost back down to the ground, but looks like it's going to die fast enough anyway. We're going to get this one cleared pretty quickly. No damage taken at all. Well played, Team Coast. And there it is. Impaler didn't even have smite, but he knew he was safe. That's the drawback of swapping up to the top side, but it's something that teams have always given up knowing this and going for that lane swap. Let's see if they do come down. They're going to walk right through that ward here. Thresh going to roam over towards that mid lane. Yeah, nothing grabbed just yet, but yeah, this could be the gank attempt. Ari is pretty far down, and the wards have expired. They timed his drink it pretty nicely on this one. He's got no vision for the next 45 seconds or so. Now, can they make the play? Well, look at his positioning. His trinket wore out. He, you knew all along that he was going to play cautiously. He had it in his mind. That's why he warded up there in the first place. And Jez is uh, playing this one safe. Hovers on the bottom side. Nothing gained for Curse Academy. All right, so whatever. Actually, kind of that same trio from Team Coast did kind of the same thing on the other side of the map. They just kind of chilled by the bot lane. Realize that there is no one coming in to soak up the experience. They saw Mash was about to push that wave in. Said if someone shows up for this turret, we'll dive him. No one showed. They recalled back. Looks are going to go back to uh, the old lanes, and Chris will finally get in lane for the first time this game. All right, let's see here. We talked a lot about the early ganking pressure of the junglers. Uh, both of them level three now. Definitely able to make moves. Now they're just 
cuddled up here with the support and everybody's going topside, but they've pinged out the ward already. Saint coming in for backup. And the first sweepers have actually already come in there. Impaler, I believe, yeah, that was off of the Razor Beak Smite. Got to get the easy quick clear on that ward. Of course, the rest of the team still got seen, I believe. And Coast saying, well, you know, there's a chance we could win this one. Ezreal coming in as well, so four members topside for Coast. And they've got to be a little cautious after that ward got uh, cleared out. They know that something's up there and just cleared it. So Cop and Bunny Fufu -Fu keeping the wave pushing against them. Just going to let it go into the turret. Can she Ooh, make a the play, flash though? Ooh, good flash away. All right. Well, Trader Summoner Spells top lane now able to be pushed on. Yeah, good little bit of damage done there. But, of course, now bot lane completely vacant. No one's there. Haunts are finally walking his way over. But this is actually going to allow Chris to teleport and match him if they want to uh, fight that matchup after all. Well, Chris definitely needs to get that large bunch of experience at that turret because here he's currently down two to four uh, versus Haunster in levels, and that would be a lot more difficult for him. St. Vicious, you can see, he's already looking to pressure. Maybe they want to make something happen before he can get to uh, a more healthy situation here. St. on the bottom side, hovering around. Oh, uh, yeah, getting a dive onto Chris. Maybe it can't happen, but they're a little bit low on level. We'll have to see if they choose to do it or not. Jess is still kind of fighting equal. At this point, though, since they have vision on the Curse Academy support there, Bunny Fufu in the top lane, Jess is going to be able to play a little bit more confidently. He's actually already winning his matchup by 13 minions. Yep, that's going to be a pretty good thing here for Coast if they can get Jez's roaming around to try and create some plays. Because the other thing about Lissandra is he's great at setting up ganks. Oh my gosh, it's brutal, and we're going to see then if this is going to happen here. Chris has caught up to level 4 now. He got a big wave for himself when he teleported down just a minute ago. And he is so far just holding equal to Hanser there. Equal CS as well, just catching that one big wave was all he needed. Yeah, I really thought Saint was going to come do something, but it is fairly dangerous this early yeah. on. Even though she's not um, level 6 and can't go immune, she does have that very large... Um, the root? Uh, or the claw. Ability to traverse terrain. Yeah. <laughs> Let's true. go with that. <laughs> traverse, I like it. No, it's, it's, that's kind of the right call on this one. So yeah, no no hectic dive. I, I really thought, yeah, like it was attacks played by Team Coast to go for the dragon. You know, they got time out of lane. Chris didn't get XP. Sheep didn't go for a gank attempt. But all it took was Jess to play safe, to not get ganked by the support realm. And Chris with one teleport got himself back in. So well played in the lane swap. Impaler, defensive pink ward down. is going to keep him safe. St. Vicious not going to lose one to the enemy support. And he's level 5. Closing in towards that level 6. Now, even even when he does get level 6, none of these lanes are really easy for Pantheon to go and just pop off a man drop and get a yeah. tank on. Everybody's got a way to escape it. So he has to be a bit more careful and probably save it for more of a skirmish or teamfight oriented uh, time in the game. Have you played a Pantheon into a Soraka yet? Or she just puts the silence uh, on your, on your down. man drive. I've, I've played a lot of things into Soraka, and she's pretty much annoying for everybody. <laughs> That's The silence is so big. Everybody hates laying against her and the heals and the constant regeneration of health, but yeah. the silence is, is definitely key to her kit. Yeah, it's worked out pretty well so far. I've seen people stop the, uh, the Lee Sin knockbacks as well. He jumps in, she can't ward hop away or anything, so. Oh man, this this ward that Hanser put, you know, when we thought they might be diving Chris, uh, is actually on the top side of the little uh, blue camp brush. And so the pink ward that Impaler put doesn't see it. It's just outside of the oh, range. Oh wow. So a really nice placement there uh, from Hanser. Because a lot of uh, junglers will defensively ward their side of the jungle after a lane swap yeah. uh, with pink wards because it's pretty much common knowledge that they're going to leave around wards behind. But a really uh, interesting placement there. Gets them a couple extra minutes of knowledge. That's a really, really smart play. I never thought to put it there, but hey, really good choice. Kian is going to root the tick ward away. It just went down, in fact, so pretty much 100 gold gone from Jess for that one. Impaler back around. Could go for the Scott Alert now. Of course, this is coming back up in 15 seconds. The first dragon, or er, yeah, dragon was claimed very early on. Coast will pick this one up. Ooh! Bunny Fufu almost stole it, but now it's Vision for Team Coast. Yeah, that's actually a pretty big priority. And it's all about the timing of taking these Scuttlers. Right before the Dragon there, if there's a fight, the speed boost provides a huge, huge advantage. Oh, man. Yeah. And then just that vision that you're going to want to have around it. St. Vicious, though, as we said on Pantheon, would be looking for a team fight uh, oriented time to use his ultimate, and that would be it if everyone was grouped up in Dragon. 
picked up on Dragon level 6 now for both top laners. A good early poke out by Hanser. Chris very low, but Hanser without mana means both might have to uh, recall if they want to do much in a team fight if Dragon were to start. Has respawned, of course. Stat bonus to Team Coast for having that buff. Means more for someone like Mash than it does for someone like Jess's, though. Chris gonna recall right now and fill up. Man, this may be them looking to make a move. Both mid laners with the blue buffs and ready to go. But he heads right back to lane. And there are plenty of defensive pink wards uh, up here for Chris Academy right now. So the invades for either side are very difficult. Such an even game right now. This is ridiculous. 11, almost 11 minutes in and pretty much dead even, save for that early small gold trade for the dragon buff. Yeah, and I'll, honestly, yeah, we had like the one big aggressive move for the flash rocket grab from Sheep, but that wasn't quite enough. Flash by Bunny, just nice and safe, and we're back into two-on-two -two lane. So now we're going to see if this matchup tilts in any way. The big thing, though, is it's a tier of the Goddess for Ezreal versus a BF Sword for Cop. So there's Ooh. a gigantic damage disparity in this duel lane. That is going to be painful. And now you can see why they're playing so far back here. Ezreal is just trying to poke, charge that... Uh, here up. I'm interested to see if he actually goes into Trinity Force or does go full blue build here. Uh, as we've seen Faker in the mid, didn't like to go for the extra damage rather than the yeah. slow effect. I, I tend to see when it's a double AD comp, you both go Triforce because you want that power spike. In yeah. fact, um, what I really liked uh, who he did it is he started Longsword to make sure that because he was going to buy tier as well, he could get the Triforce early enough. He didn't want to drop the 400 gold in the Doran's Blade. It yeah. let his power spike come in sooner. I, I pretty much like Triforce over um, the Gauntlet in most scenarios now, actually, just because mid game is so important. Mm -hmm. And any Triforce champions that you have can give you a whole bunch of room to work with yeah. for these mid game dragons. Yeah, there's a bunch of like really weird considerations. It's like, what can you kite around with the Iceborne Gauntlet? And also, is the armor valuable? He is facing an AD jungle and AD mid, both of whom want to target him. So there's like some extra reason to go Iceborne. It's true. Even if you weren't going to in the first place. And again, it's just going to be up to what the player decides to do. He's got the blue skin, so maybe that's a tip up. That's Great. true. It's Frosted Ezreal. So, I'll have to see what this one ends up being. Sheep chilling with a regular skin. Doesn't support Riot in the tournament realm. How unfortunate. I like this, too. Uh, the one early move from the junglers is only a, a move when he knows there's no vision from Ca Curse Academy, and they're going through a pink ward into a lane gank here. It's the only aggressive move that we've seen from either jungler so far. And just because everyone's playing so passively, it's not going to work out. But that was one where they were sure that his movements were not seen. It's just very strange to go for it, because again, they're at such an item disparity in the bot lane. If there is a counter gank, they'd lose the fight. It, it, the big risk, of course, nothing happened to him. He didn't get seen going in, didn't end up ganking in the first place. Yeah, even with the BF sword here, there's no bullying. Everybody's just playing extremely safe, Ezreal CSing from afar. Deathfire has been completed onto Arya, yeah. though, so that is a big point for them. Uh, pointed out the early roaming. Uh, Jez is pretty much just in lane, but he does have that kill pressure. It's all about landing one charm and bursting him down. Looks like it will be uh, Trinity Force, by the way. Another Longsword picked up after Manamune for uh, Mash here on Ezreal. Uh, first Jungle Enchant actually came out for St. Vicious as well, so he's got a small lead over Impaler as far as combat stats go. So some of these power spikes have come in fairly unevenly uh, across <laughs> the game. As you say that, like two seconds later. <laughs> well, he had it first. <laughs> now we're back to square one. But hey, Saint's got less potions. <laughs> That's the difference in items here. It'd be a close fight if those two battle. All right, what would the move be here then? Because both top laners are pretty even and they both have teleport as well. This is such a stalemate. Everybody's moving down to Dragon. They've sort of been able to creep vision inside Curse Academy's uh, side of the jungle here, but it's still really lacking. And they're still, uh, Curse Academy are still the ones with Pantheon, so. Grouping up is very dangerous. Ooh, Chris actually misses his jump back because of a great knockout by Hanser. And look at that, Hanser knocks him down to one third of health. This match is starting to win for Curse Academy. This is their edge. Yeah, you can see there's no, you know, everybody was grouped up around Dragon there for Coast, but they decide not to go for it. Oh, Saint oh! gets invaded. Nice play by Sheep. Saint forced a flashway. Now he is screwed. That is a kill being picked up by the Blitzcrank of Sheep. 
He gets a red buff. So all it takes is that one little line of wards. They moved it up just barely past the river and take the opportunity to invade. Instant kill onto Saint, and that could be the second Dragon Teleport coming in. Oh, they're going to have to match with Chris. Chris does TP a little bit late, and okay, here we go. Hauntzer is in on this one in front of Dragon, but there's no jungler here. This would be an easy smite there for Impaler. But he with the hook and the lantern to get him out, but the ulti comes in. Hauntzer's going to go down. One for zero in this fight, but in the back line, in comes Zed. Keen forcing the flash away by Impaler. Sheep drops as well, traded back by Ezra. Buddy Fufu, nice move on the ball, but Mash is about to die. Can Cop get the kill? Ooh. Yes. Dodges the charm as well, and Jess is. Can he win the fight? Yes. Yes, he sure can. And that is a Saint whole bunch of kills. still has his ultimate, too, if he can get a little bit closer. Okay, so that was the four versus five. It was a great move by Coast to go out of the Dragon Pit and leave Hauntzer in there by himself. So the main tank is just taking a bunch of damage from Dragon early on. And it really gives them the edge in this fight. So Hauntzer here takes a Dragon shot. He's stuck inside. Cop tries to lay down some cover fire for Bunny Fufu to let him out, but he gets caught by Chris. And they go all in, bursting down the tank. Keen come in, comes in to clean it up, though, and Watch the dodges that Cop uh, tries to use here for Jezus. He's expecting this charm. So flash right there, expecting a charm. And then another dash for the second one. And he actually does dodge the charm. But still, Impaler is able to come in to clean it up. That's beautiful stuff there. That fight ended up being three for three overall. But a catch again onto Sheep. He's got no health there. Gets a knock with the AD carry. In comes Jarvan. Sheep survives. Wanted to hook someone in just to try to trade one for one. Wow, great job not overextending there. Thought they were going to go too deep. Oh, and Cop's still doing work as the pause comes in. This is two versus four currently right now. Cop and Buddy Fufu, and they're wrecking people down bottom. They've yeah. already chunked out Blitzcrank. There's still three more people, though, at full life. Chucking down Chris now, to, again, to 50% HP. There's still no backup unless Saint decides to get in a range to ult, though. Yeah, and that was interesting. Chris actually had, like kind of stopped for a second or two. And I know, uh, again, like, might have been you know, the yeah, that might have been the reason for the pause again. Coast told me that also when Paler not feeling well, they might have to go for random pause. Maybe Chris is the one who typed pause, and that's why he got caught again. <laughs> we'll speculate speculate about it later. We can talk to him afterwards. Otherwise, again, very, very close game. Three to four and kills. 500 gold difference in that prior dragon, I don't believe, even went down yet. So it's just still the, the one dragon to zero. So no extra buffs in this one. Again, a very, very close game. We knew this series was going to be super close. Um, you're seeing playmakers on both sides. I kind of want to give the edge to the team that picked Thresh because I just uh -huh. feel like there's so much playmaking available there, and there's just so much you can do with that champion that I am a little bit concerned for Coast in the mid-game. Sheep made plays already. He started out That's with true. the red buff steal, That's and then point. he forced a couple flashes. I guess I'm underselling Butts Crank here. So. I, do have, I have to give that champion respect, but I just, like... It's hard for me to like change my perception of like it's the it's the Thresh hype match and then like the other hook champion comes in like I don't care about you. <laughs> Thresh is the new king. No love for sheep on the Blitzcrank. Sorry. It's been working out pretty well for it him. Has. Um right now though, he like we said, he just got chunked out of this fight. So there's currently a health lead yeah. uh, on the map for Chris Academy. But we'll see what they can actually do with it though. As are the rules in LCS, obviously no talking during this, so they're just gonna have to figure out what is the best move because they can take a look around the map at least. Yeah, they can figure out what all is going on here in this one. It looks like um, I'm kind of being able to, I'm looking down here. It looks like Blue Buff had just been grabbed by Curse Academy, so Keen kind of on the left side of the map there. Uh, both top laners without teleports available, and Hauntzer's isolated way up there. He walked back to top lane here, so there's a chance that Hauntzer can't be a part of whatever fight ends up happening. Yeah, there's no way, because they both used teleports for that early dragon, so yeah. looks like they will be stuck without him. Of course, Chris, though, at like 20 health at this point after getting hooked, I mean, that's going to be him out of the fight kind of for the, the similar reason. So, uh, yeah, we kind of have to see. Again, there's a lot to speculate about as the fight kind of moves on from here. Finally, the action. <laughs> yeah. Going to see what happens. Yeah, it's true. Cause people getting hooked back and forth now and things going on. Um, so kind of thinking about what these teams are trying to do, of course, a lot of uh, sort of pick potential by Team Coast, right? The Jarvan engages, the Ari catches, the Lissandra catches, mm -hmm. and I guess Blitzcrank catches as well, and then Mash is like, well, you guys dive in. I'm just super safe. I'm as real, like, no big deal. Um, what I actually like about Ezreal, I feel, like I feel like this is undersold about the champion, is he has a long-range high burst ultimate. Like, Ezreal gets to help pick people off more than most other AD carries. Yeah, not only that, but he can also use his Arcane Shift forward, right, and mm -hmm. go to finish people off. So all of the people here on uh, Coast can follow up on any sort of pick that's made. Yeah. If Blitzcrank gets a pull, everybody can jump on that person, right? And I think it's just, like, a little bit harder for Curse Academy there. I feel like some of it has to be a little bit more set up. That said, they have better hard engage. They have the St. Vicious ults right behind the enemy team, and they're either run into a Pantheon and get stunned, or they run back into the team. Maokai. And, and yeah, run into a Maokai, right. So uh, unfortunately, Hanser did go for Rod of Ages. He didn't go for the 
righteous glory. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> well, you really like that wicked build. I, I, I became a fan by the end of it because you get really tanky really quick with it. Yeah, and you have just really good ways of starting things. I do, I do like that. A bunch of sort of strategic value items got introduced to the game that say, okay, shoot, we didn't pick very well. Well, we'll itemize around it. Mm -hmm. Like there's ways to like kind of save yourself from a mistake or just accentuate. Uh, a well-planned strat from champs like in the first place. And Righteous Glory would be perfect for pulling off one of those pincer movements where you have the Pantheon ult and you're trying to squeeze them in between. I'm trying to think of like the time run when the slow explosion comes in. You could probably do it with like, okay, he's going to man drop, we're going to put the buff on him, and he's going to land with an extra slow. I don't know if it's good or not. <laughs> I just said you could do it. It's possible. It is possible. Good. That's, that's all I really cared about here in this one. Um, and also, yeah, you've got to keep in mind, like, Keen's got his great split push power coming in. Uh, I do hear the pause will be done fairly soon, so we'll have the game again in a second. Um, but yeah, we were talking about how good Zed split pushes were as well, and honestly, I feel like that's been uh, pretty successful, and I think it will be as well. Keen's been a very good performer for Curse Academy overall. Yeah, he's got the blade and the brutalizer already. Okay, pause goes down, and Chris is done. So, right. oh. that answers that. No time to get his ult, uh, or his ult was on cooldown. Tough break there. Well, we're going to see that coast are still fairly safe. Again, Hanser was on the wrong side of the map, so it's a 4v4 anyway, and nothing really picked up for that kill. Like we said, that was literally 2v4. Bunny and Cop just chunked Blitz and got a kill on the top laner. So, huge amount of power down here uh, coming from that Curse Academy bottom lane. And we talked about that early BS Sword and Lucian, uh, that early right. flat attack damage advantage he was going to have in that bottom lane if finally comes to fruition. That's the value of having uh, you know, a kind of easier ramp up type build is he's got about 75 attack damage worth of items, not counting his Doran's Blade, whereas Smash is still scaling up. This feels like a team comp where Coast kind of wants to wait around a little bit more. They've got some playmaking, they've got ways to do things early on, but Smash is going to be behind comp for a while. And there definitely is a lot more attention paid down bottom. The, the fight over vision down here is is pretty intense. Both guys uh, trying to return to the bottom lane around this dragon that still has not been taken. And the fight over the crab is that much more important because the wards are constantly going down. Yeah, these players have done a really good job of sweeping wards away in general. Both of them now running four sweepers at this point. Uh, and actually, it's one of the ways I would track dragon progress if I wasn't like pressing tab a whole bunch is like how far into the game are we okay 30 minutes it's probably dragon number four but with the lane swap like first dragon came in at three minutes and I was like all right accelerated dragon pace dragon five is going to be at like 26 minutes <laughs> and then well this next one like took 10 minutes to take down as you say that pretty much everybody on coast around it and once again haunts her top lane no teleport so this would be four versus five if there was a fight at all Wow, and look at that. Chris had been sent to the mid lane, so Dragon number two goes over to Coast, and Paler spending that right on time. So all that investment in ward coverage does pay off once again for Coast. Not able to create another play on bottom, but Dragon stacking up slowly but surely for Team Coast. Yep. It's going to give him minion damage here in 4.20, and it's not 4.21, so it's not turret damage, it's minion damage, which makes Chris a really, really good wave clear champion, and St. Vicious caught again! Ooh, he's going to go down. So yep. Pantheon, uh, especially going the damage jungle early item here, pretty easy for teams that pick off like this. The double AP teams that we've been seeing a lot more of, especially with Lissandra, it makes it really scary for these damage heavy junglers. Uh, if you are if you misposition it at all, they could punish you very, very quickly. First time it did cost them control of Dragon. This time it's just going to be a kill though. Is it just the one for nothing? Not too bad. Otherwise, Chris forced to run all the way to top lane, clear away a wave that Hanser was pushing in. He's going to pretty much come close to equal again in gold and XP on this one. Coast, though, still behind in gold overall just because of some various farm leads, jungle and top lane especially. AD carry massively, 30, 30 minutes there. And Plus now two turns to zero. Turns, yeah. yeah, Chris Academy choosing different objectives and getting gold for it. Yeah, so the early gold lead translated into items can translate then into mid-game dragons. Really, if you give up the dragons early, it's not as big of an effect because the bonus it gives you is percentage, and then dragons itself take a while to stack up. So if you use the early gold from the turrets that you took, to control the mid-game dragons and get yourself back in. As long as you don't continue to give them up, uh, right. then it's definitely a very, very strong strat. And so far, so good. Curse Academy, plenty of gold in their pockets for this one. And we're going to see if the stats of Team Coast can handle that one. Jess has already hit his first item spike. He's got the Sork Shoes now as well. Looks like he's looking towards the Zonias to not die to Keen. That's my guess of the Amptome. But the Zed is honestly pretty big. He's got two core items on already. Yeah, the double blades completed is the really big spike for Zed, and his assassination potential is extremely high. So now 
you know, you do have to worry about the Curse Academy picks just as much as you have to worry about these double AP ones that are going to blow somebody up. That's why I constantly they are fighting over the ward coverage. The other thing Ooh. is that, oh! Nice hook, nice knockup. Bunny Fufu -Foo flashes, but it's too late. Dies anyway. Loss of flash, loss of a champion. Nice job, Coast. There's your blitz plays, and here goes Chris. Flash Lissandra the root as well, Cop. Just flashes well, but still goes down. Nice root by Hanser, though. Just in a really bad spot. Flash the way does stay safe. Oh -ho -ho! Nice hook onto the Maokai. Hanser, he picked the right skin, but he's taking some damage here. Now here comes Pantheon. Jess's will go down. Nice ultimate there from Saint to actually time that one correctly. It's kind of hard to position those. Sheep did his best to save him. Oh my gosh, another two-man route. They go for Saint, hooked on after the knockup. Here comes Zed, though. It's going to be a one-for-one. One. Saint and Paler both going to drop for this one. Out goes Zed. But on Hanser, he's going to run away. And actually, it's Iceborne. He got a lung server when Iceborne anyway. Hanser now heavily slowed. He's got to be careful in this one. Yeah, it's going to be rough for him to get out, so he just goes back in to try and get a kill here. Keen returns. Goes in, nearly gets Chris down. The flash going to keep him safe there, trading his route for that one. It's a free flash grab. Whew. What an exciting turn of events here. And Blitzcrank, I have to say, play after play after play right there yep. from Sheep. Almost able to save his teammates even. You think of Blitzcrank as the more offensive of the two champions with hooks. Uh, but he is almost able to pull everyone away from Jez's. Yep. Making me a believer. I'm sorry for doubting you, Sheep. The Tur Blitzcrank pick worked under great. pressure, though. All yeah. right. It's all right. So, Coast squeaked up a plus one kill from before. They were up one kill before, now they're up two. Blue buff steal not going to happen there. And Keen's going to miss out on 40 gold for that, but whatever. Elaine's still under fire. Cops got that Infinity Edge. Of course, Shiv not far away either. But they're just not really looking to push too hard right now. It's fairly safe for everybody. And Pele are going to be able to grab this uh, blue buff without much issue either. The big thing, though, I think now uh, is that the teleports are still desynced. So. Once again, Chris now has the actual advantage for split pushing with the Lissandra. He can go shove waves really quickly. And then as we've already seen, you know, he can create plays for the rest of the team. If he can teleport in, if you get any sort of deep wards here as Team Coast uh, and have a Lissandra teleporting in from the backside, you can immediately jump on whatever target Chris locks down uh, for the kill. Yeah, and that's going to be all kinds of dangers for Chris Academy. They've got to give so much respect here, but they're kind of pulling the team apart. They're saying, look, one of you can engage, but if you don't have the follow-up, the champion won't go down. And Keen actually splitting the team up by split pushing in this bottom lane. It's cheap right now, probably not the best defender, but someone will be there eventually, I assume. It's scary enough, I guess. <laughs> Zed has to back off. I think that Saint's also going to save his ultimate for um, re-engages. Uh, he's not going to be the primary engagement for Curse Academy. So they'll probably use it as a reactionary Pantheon ultimate for whenever uh, Coast do go for a pick, and then try and jump on wherever they uh, decide to engage. That'll be interesting. I want to see if Satan does go for that one. It wouldn't be my first guess, but Kobe, I trust you. We Let's have a connection. The old, mm -hmm. the old guard. The XCLG jungle play. Well, Sapling's going to spot things out. Hanser and Co. do walk through a ward in the meantime. Dragon back up in 24 seconds. Looks like Coast yet again did grab the Scuttler. Gonna They've have been extra vision. maintaining that crap control really well. Yeah, very uh, good by Impaler. Especially on the bottom side here for the Dragons. Yeah, Baron only spawned four minutes ago, so he didn't really need to control that very much. Top lane has tended to be ignored as well. Six to eight kills, Team Coast. Not yet in position. They've got vision, but no champions really here. So, uh, Chris Academy going to want to try and at least force the teleport cooldown quickly here because Chris is gaining a lot of ground. Tele uh, the top turret already going down, and they needed that bunch of uh, global gold too. So much global gold in these outer turrets left standing for Coast just to pick up and get uh, back to even. If they can even out that gold lead, the extra dragon advantage is definitely going to pay dividends later in the game. And yeah, still no one really answering this Lissandra up there. So Chris getting a whole lot of damage down. The extra minion damage she gets from the Dragon Buffs helping with this one. Minions cleared in the bot lane. Nothing done. Look yeah. at this. Chris got two turrets for nothing. And they still have yet to start the Dragon. Oh, but he gets but they hooked get a hook. 4v5. They get the kill for it. She blocks the cooling. Dragon still being attacked. In came Chris. Slows two down. Keen is there, though. And Chris in a bad spot. Jumps away with the claw. Dragon. There comes Zed, though. Looks for what he can. But Keen's still going to go down. Two for one now. And this one's Saint going to get pulled in. Down he goes, three for one. Beautiful fight for Team Coast. Now Cobb's in a bad spot. He gets arrested. And double kill for Jesses. Sheep is a monster. Oh, they got 
Well, one and a half turrets. That secondary turret up top is almost going down. And he gets the pick just in time. Beautiful teleport in means they also are going to get the dragon after this. Team Coast now definitely jumping out to a pretty good lead. That would be their third dragon as well as now the gold lead on top. Another flash hook from Sheep, instantly killed. And then Chris teleports in as soon as he's in danger, ults himself and buys time. I thought the dragon was going to turn around and finish him off, but it doesn't get the attack off in time. And Impaler going down instead does not cost them another hook to clean up the kill and earn them the dragon. Hauntzer himself just barely limped away with any health left, so... Beautiful stuff there, Team Coast looking pretty happy now. They've got a gold lead on top of three dragons over their opponents, so really good game here for them. Yes, by all measurements, Coast are winning the game now. Paler does find that ward in time. Oh, there he goes, brings that one down. I really do like getting the Razorbeak Smite uh, later on in the game. It's just like, it also lets you know if you're running through a ward in the first place. Even a pink ward, it pops up as well, to my knowledge. Yeah, even not, not even just later on, but even early game. Oh, yeah. Uh, even on your first game. Uh, a lot of people save their second smite just to go for the Razor Beaks before going for your gank. Just because the early ganks are so important and you really cannot afford to get counter ganked that early on because they're squishy. Mid turret does go down though. More global gold. And here goes Saint. It All is right. actually the initiate. He wants to jump on in, but Impaler puts himself in there. Trades one for one support for Juggling. The battle has begun. Jess is forced to back out. Curse Academy on the chase. Cop loses a lot of health for one Mystic shot though. Haunts are slowed down as well. Chris on the wrong side of this fight. He's still coming down. That's the danger with going in as the point man with the Pantheon who's a little bit behind here. Gets blown up really quickly, and it's the re-engage from Coast. All right, flash loss for the Cataclysm, but Coast now have positional advantage on the mid lane to go for it. Top lane also has got a wave coming down. They could push for this, maybe the blue buff as well. Yeah, remember that top turret's so low. Should be able to clean up that extra chunk of change. Oh, they take the blue instead. Looks like they are not going to push this turret down. They're worried about getting split pushed on. Keen's actually going to, be able to grab this blue buff there. They saw him with the pink ward, but look at that. Looks like without contest, and no top lane turret going to go down. Just afraid of blues for that. Interesting. It doesn't look like Coasts are too afraid of the Zed split push because uh, Ari actually opted for the Rylites instead of trying to create an early Zanyas. And Ezreal actually wow. has a decent time. Blue Ezreal should be able to kite Zed fairly efficiently. Should be decent. Last Whisper being done as well is going to give Crazy Poke on top of that. So he's got a bunch of different ways that he can fight efficiently here. Chris has his Zanyas, though. So he's got plenty of tools to deal with Keen. Let's see if he can actually make it happen. And Max CDR build. Oh, misses he missed. the Q, but hey, some root ults it as well. So Keen's going to try to get away from this one. Pops the ulti. There's Zonyas. It's actually a little bit late. The death mark is on him. Doesn't mean too much damage, though. Chris going back in. Keen's got to be real careful. So does Chris, though. That's true. They both back out. Used all of his defensives. Uh, Lissandra really relies on cooldowns. She's still extremely squishy if you get past the invulnerabilities. So Keen does get out alive. Drew some extra attention from the team and bought a little bit more time for Curse Academy to try and farm up on the other side of the map. You can see top lane now pushing for them. Mid lane no under pressure. Yeah, so we're going to see if Chris or someone can come back to that lane in time. Looks like that will be Chris heading to over to that side. Uh, Jess is on top of the ward. Sheep's going to find it for him, though. And out that goes. Okay. Toko slowly and slowly getting under more and more control. Next dragon will be dragon number four. So they're uh, 10 minutes away from crazy dragon buff if, that, well, if they want that to be their win condition here. Five dragons is pretty much the most surefire way to win games on the preseason. So. I like to kill the Nexus. <laughs> well, I guess that's number one. <laughs> Number two is dragon number five. Although, it didn't work for uh, Fusion in game one, though. There's actually a comeback despite dragon number five in our first series of the day. If you guys missed that series, by the way, you really should. Yeah, how many try. times have you ever gotten five dragons and not won the game? That I hasn't actually happened to me. I don't think I've been a part of a game like that myself. But I might have just like, lost track. It can be done, though. Of course you can. You've seen it. <laughs> Here we go. Coast going to move on in. Mid-tier 2, the target Chris does have teleport. Haunter does not, so again, Coast able to be the aggressive team with a teleport lead as well. Keen is going to split push to the right-hand side. Uninhibited. So there are three lockets of the Iron Solari on Curse Academy. All right, Keen's wow. going to be in trouble here right now, but that is really, really odd. Even two is a little bit questionable because they do not stack. I mean, you, ha you get that... Uh, Reduced effect. Yeah. So three of them is a little bit overkill. 
That's or just, a lot. That's just a lot overkill. Let's lot just overkill. go ahead and say it. Yeah, two <laughs> is a little bit of overkill because <laughs> yeah, at that point you might as well buy yourself a. Uh, uh, we were talking about it a second ago. Banner of Command, honestly, would be decent right. for your second one. There we go. Battle of the Battle there. Nice ulti going to block the hook. Chris going to stay alive a bit longer. Here comes the team, though, and Pantheon. St. Vicious gets the kill, and now Sheep's a bit alone. The rest of Curse Academy coming in to help. Two for zero. Nice play. Seen in uh, Keenan Saint with the outplays here. Does give them control, but 47 seconds on the new dragon. The respawn timer's not going to be long enough for them to retain control of the area. It's just a couple of kills picked up, and actually, Haunter gets picked. Wow, big amount of damage onto him. The root's not going to be enough. He's going to go right in there. Gets picked off, though. One for zero for Team Coast. Impaler, though, on the wrong side of this fight. Cop doing plenty of damage there. Dashes on in. St. Vicious to secure the kill with the Long Range Spear Toss. So they end up trading another one for one, and that is actually the jungler down, and it w he will remain down for the next dragon. So that series of events yeah. actually will give them control of the dragon. Saint looking to take it. Uh, Pantheon, as always, can just take zero damage from Dragon. Uh, stacking up passive. Keep Keen gonna run interference. Yeah. And 10 seconds later, they have a teleport available for Haunter, so when he revives, he can join the fight. Coast are gonna, if they fight this, it's a 4v5. Yep. Very dangerous for Team Coast to stick around here. Bundy's not around, though. They can risk the smite battle. Here comes the teleport. All right, Hanser, who does he block off there? Ezreal far away, low on mana though. Dragon down to 2,000 health. St. Vicious, can he win the smite here? Hanser can help win him out. versus nobody? Nobody. <laughs> and he loses to Cop. <laughs> Didn't smite it, actually take that back. He's saving it in case there's another objective coming in. Wise choice, actually. Smite yep. is a very, very precious resource, especially this late in the game. Uh, the answer from Coast, though, I like it. They don't waste any time. Swinging straight over to mid here, and that's just the first dragon for Chris Academy. So an extra secondary turret taken for Coast. Let's see if they can get two. Oh, nice. The Paler burns the Smite to get the extra little uh, wolf spirit down there to help watch for flanks. I like that one a lot as well. Anytime you push a lane over there. But in comes Pantheon. This could be a battle. Teammates are around. Nothing to find. Look at this. The pick waiting to happen. Hauntzer. Ooh. He knew they were there. You can see the ward come down. Juke did pretty nicely. Scuttler goes down. Coast have vision over Baron. OK, so these guys have been going back and forth. Coast felt like they were in control for what I thought was a large percentage of this game. Mm -hmm. But Curse Academy have played so well with the deficit. They're still down kills, they're still down dragons, and yet they're still finding ways to take really good fights, to clean up battles, to find these picks that I thought I was going to get more of. And this is that mid game, you know, where yeah. you really have to worry about it. Even if you do have the lead, um, you have to be very cautious about how you do control mid game vision so that you don't give away those picks, especially to a team like this. Teleport from Chris, not going to find anything. Puts the claw down. He could flash old Hanser, but probably not worth it. Sheep's got his flash. Anytime we've seen Sheep with his flash up on this Blitzcrank, flash Q on plays cooldown. will be made. And he makes those plays without flash as well. Just been really great this game so far. Yeah. Blue buff going pretty safely to Ari. Split push Zed just getting more and more farm. 301 minion kills, highest in the game. Big threat, this Zed. Yep, uh, that last whisper coming in. And he's working on Guardian Angel, it looks like, too. So he will be dedicated uh, split pusher. And he's made slow and steady progress. This bot tier 2 has taken a little bit of damage, but not too much overall. It does still stand right now. Coast back again in defensive duty. The thing is, I feel like the landscape of this game changed a little bit now. Coast felt like they were very aggressive, kind of for 20 minutes on repeat. Aggressively controlling vision control. Okay, there's a move from Impaler. Burns a flash, but now he's without with he is without a, a combat ultimate. So maybe have to wait again for that to come back up and maybe find a window when the flash is still down. Yeah, but let's Coast see. Being so spread out, they're not able to do too much. I mean, they've gotten some deep wards down here on the red side, Dunkle, okay. but really, what can you get about that? It's going to be a while for the next dragon. I get this. They, they can get the outer turret, but really, they give up. Baron, they've all been alerted. Whoopsies, we whipped. We left one area dark here on the map, and they right. should be able to get there. No, they're not looking for this one. Keen keeps them interested, and Curse Academy going to get a Baron. Absolutely great play. So bot lane turret goes down anyway. Keen doesn't really care. And Paleo's like, guys. All the steal. He's there in help. time. He's there. Can he get it? Oh! Yes, he does. <laughs> and Paler wins the smite ward. Oh. No one's surprised at all. Keen, Coast, pick up oh, Baron. Oh, no. 
no, that's just... All right, let's see what else they can get. Pantheon dropping not quite the right direction, though. Coast still able to retreat away from this one. Scrying Orb sees him. The Coast back out. Baron for one kill. Man, you really just got to feel bad for him. You know he's going to get so much flack for that. Oh, my gosh. The, the thread's already number one on Reddit right now. It's actually uh, already happened. I feel his pain, though. That was that was rough. Uh, Jarvan does have uh, the first on hit. Is going to do a bunch of extra max health damage to Baron. So yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pantheon no, has an auto crit. Though. There's reasons why. Yeah, <laughs> that was pretty much just really good play from Impaler going in there, fearless. One versus three does he, get the steal off before he goes down. So you got to give two. Yeah, you got to give credit to Impaler in here. There was no vision. He flag tossed at like the exact right time, like it happened to be at 2,000 health, and was like, yeah. "All right, going for it." And people kept hitting the Baron too. Uh, yeah, you you can wait out the equal then, at least make him flash. Yeah, yeah, that's true. There's actually ways to do silly things with that one, but all oh, right. Well, so that's in the past. We'll move on from there. Now it's Baron over to Coast, and that definitely yeah. will give them the upper hand here because this that one sneaky move. I thought that was gonna get, you know, Curse Academy yeah. back in here. Let's take another look at so. You see the flag come down, they're still hitting Baron, and he jumps in, and they're still hitting Baron. And Saint never it gets his might. smite off. He I never got it off. It. Yeah. Rough play. That plus the uh, optimist. Uh, ooh, now he's going to get picked. Ooh, that charm hit, but he's not in vision, so he walks the other direction, basically. Saint, the ult comes in. There's the Q. The locket shield keeps him alive. Where's the other locket shield? Hauser's not there. He's going to finally go down. Yeah, those lockets. We return to the lockets once again. <laughs> hey, they got they used so two there. You line. see what their idea was. Oh my god, there's so much AP here, and we're facing an Ezreal who's going tier first, so there's gonna be very little attack damage. So we're like, great, you know what would be the best item for this situation? Lock it. Lock it. And you're you're correct. Lock it is the best item for this situation, looking at this team. However, three lockets is not better. Yep. <laughs> we should enforce deck limits. Like in TCGs. Like you can't have more uh -huh. than two lockets on a team. No, because it opens up <laughs> opportunities like this. Maybe it is a good strategy, and we just don't know. All right, well, Coast going to back off after a Tier 2 turret kill. They've actually now knocked down all six turrets outside of Curse Academy's base. They're still wearing Baron buff for a bit longer, and they've got 10 seconds on this dragon. Now, thanks to the one grab by Curse Academy, this will only be dragon number four. But Team Coast will now get turret damage off this one. Here they come, right into the bush, too. Oh, goodbye, Bunny Fufu hopping through the forest, gets bopped on his head. Now comes the battle. Chris going to pop the Zodis, but here comes Keen doing a whole bunch of damage, and down goes Jesses, but they're fighting back and forth. Sheep gets away, Mash putting out the damage, but does he put out enough as Blue Ezra looks like Curse Academy able to push on through two for one? Two for one pretty big here for Curse Academy. This could be their saving grace. They definitely don't want to give up any more dragons. Mash is ridiculous right now, though. He even has the Essence Reaver, so he can continue to poke forever. Oh, wow, that Saint should be able to get this There though. we go. Nice pickup by Saint. Vicious Impaler will die. Maybe not, actually. They're all against the wall. Flash hit by Cop. He does get the kill. Jumps away as Mashman gets out. Three for one. Plus Dragon. Nice job, Chris Academy. Against the Baron buff. Yeah. All right. She's <laughs> trading back so and forth. So it goes this right game. back their way. Two Dragons to three now, so... Not that far off here for Chris Academy. And they do have the Maokai, who, by the way, even though uh, a lot of people have become really big fans of that Wicked build, going with the Rod of Ages first, you know, having yep. it stack up already, it, it's a very efficient item, all fully stacked up. So he's yep. going to be a very massive tank, and that is something that coasts uh, are kind of lacking. Because Impaler didn't go full tank, he did at least go with the Warrior enchantment. Yep. Um, he definitely cannot tank up as much as Haunter. So in those team fights, having that Maokai to lock down one of these uh, very mobile damage threats from Coast could be a very, very big tool here for Chris Academy. Uh, honestly, I think it's great. Haunter's sitting probably about 130 ability power with runes, masteries, and dragons all involved here. I mean, he's a real threat there. 124, I was close. And yeah, I mean, he's got just very high damage on abilities now. And this is one of the things about Maokai as well, is all four of his active abilities deal damage. So every level he gains, like a lot of champions, they'll, they'll like spike at level 13. Uh -huh. He spikes at level 18. Like he's still getting sapling damage, he's still getting Q damage down there. And they're all backed by 124 AP. So he's honestly just chunking people. Too bad. I really wish that was a Spirit Vicious instead of a Locket for him. Because then he would be a complete monster. Gosh, he'd be so hard to kill with that healing. All right, four people here though, form Coast. 
constantly having to worry about these picks. The vision coverage has sort of lapsed for them, so it's going to be a bit harder for them to pull those off. Now let's see if there can be a game-changing Pantheon ultimate here from St. Vicious. They've been pretty good so far at starting fights out that his team eventually wins. I mean, it's there's so many ways that, you know, Curse Academy can lock them in place, and if you get hit and you actually stay under the Pantheon ultimate, then that's a surefire way to win the fight. But no Maokai, Twisted Advance, oh. able to keep him in place. Saint just scares them off. Cop lost half his health to a Q, but the problem is he has so much life steal that it's not doing much. Sheep's gonna look for the hook right here. Chris oh. around the backside. This is the fight that Coast wants. In comes the engage. Keen hook into the team. He goes right for Jess, who does not have a Zonia, so he goes down. They trade against the Hanser Maokai, and down goes Lissandra. Chris did almost nothing except lock on oh. the back line. Saint's gonna go down. Nash still alive. Hook on in. In goes Impaler. He gets the kill on the cop. But Keen's gonna take him back down. Now Bunny Foo for the target there. Mash hit a ward, unfortunately. Finally gets that one. Triple kill for himself. Four for three, Team Coast. Yeah, and that should be uh, some continued push here from Coast. They still have the AD carry standing. Mash should be able to get some damage here under the turret. Zed doesn't even want to try and heal. Actually goes out to clear down bottom. There's nothing that he would be able to do here against Ezreal. They're just gonna give up the mid turret. Doesn't stop mid anyway. Wants to stop bottom. Does so successfully. Now can he stop the inhibitor? Maybe uh, if he puts him in a threat. Jumps away from the hook. This is going to be two structures killed. Nice job, Coast. Yeah, he doesn't have his Rune King active, so even the duel would be really difficult. No ultimate either, so gives up the inhibitor and a pin down bottom here. That'd be a dangerous swing. Pretty greedy, actually, if Coast wanted to get more. Yeah, they, there's no way they really could successfully there. All right, so let's take another look because this was such an even fight. They hook in Keen at the same time that Hauntzer goes in, though. And Keen for Jez is pretty much one for one trade at exactly the same time. In the back line, there was another one versus one. Chris and Cop almost go one for one. But then this extra hook here from Bunny extends the fight, and Impaler decides to go extremely deep. So those sort of trade as well. It's just that the AD carry left up in the late game team fights is everything. So yeah. Mash Me and Coast able to take advantage. And there's a really good quick server sash pickup there by Cop to keep himself sort of able to do things in that fight. It's the reason he actually won the duel against Lissandra, but yeah. Uh -oh. After the deal DPS is pretty important. Hook comes out. Not too much grab. Hanser on the way back here, but Sheep. Like he wants something. Has he looks for Ruin as well? Ooh, the hook's in St. Vicious, and here we go. Half health of Pantheon puts the, the uh, stuff down. There's the Cataclysm as well. The battle has begun. Jess has to get forced away, but he might still die to Deathmark. No, he will survive it just barely. On the right side of the fight, St. Vicious is going to go down two for nothing so far. Just not enough damage can quite be dealt. Chris finally falls. Kian will go down, though, on top of that one. Hanser now left alone. He's going to drop. But Cop has something to say about this one. Can he do the damage? He's oh. trying. He gets oh, three no. of them. Impaler finally turns it back around. Triple kill for the Jarvan. But it's a five for three. They're deciding between Baron and shoving up now. Looks no way they like, Baron. yeah, looks like they're gonna have to go try it out on bottom. Yeah, so there's actually no good so that, minion waves Yeah, here. that will be no objectives after that fight. These are just fun team fights to watch. Rift scuttlers up. That's actually worthwhile. Grab for <laughs> there's Baylor. a ping on it. It actually is. Like, yeah, it's actually the right about choice it, here. But that's the one in front of Baron. So that's Ooh. actually a really important rift scuttler. He decides to go bottom instead, though. Uh, Blitzcrank doesn't go for the crab. Decides to clear top. And he does have that elixir of iron as well. So Sheep yeah. on the front line does help out with the initiation. If he goes for those flash hooks, uh, the team can actually follow up now. Yeah, I actually realized, because I bought it for the first time, like yesterday, because I don't play tanks, it doesn't actually give you any combat stats. It gives you no, tenacity no. and yeah. slow resist, but it you makes you don't bigger, get so you, It makes you bigger, so you feel more yeah. like a tank. <laughs> it's like you get hit by more skill shots. It's like, well, sometimes I care about that. Then like a Thresh hooks you and you're like, oh, whoops. Shouldn't have bought that. It's actually one of my favorite items for Vi because it actually makes my Q a little bit longer. Oh, that's cool. Because Yeah, because it, it just, uh, whatever your champion model hits is going to get knocked up. It'll make your R better, too. Yeah. You not re Dang, I didn't think about that. Yeah. I wish Yvonne, I didn't even feel good about it, but it was, it was like the right choice. My R would have worked, too. Burnout probably was also better. All right, here's the crab control, and here's the important dragon. This one is going to be number four, setting them up for the fifth. Oh, they actually have to run back... Uh, Top side here, Baron threat is too much. Uh, Baron for Dragon number four, probably something I would give to the Baron team here. So, Coast running around. As ult is burned for this one, so Mash gonna have to burn some Qs to get the cooldown back soon. He already has his Mercurial Scimitar. No crit on this build though for Mash. His actual sustained DPS is super low. Which means, like, if Cop isn't just, like, ripped on by Chris, it's gonna be so much more damage dealt by yeah, the solution. And the way that these teamfights have been going. 
they're very extended and they've been extremely close here. So it's gonna the the kiting of this Ezreal is really going to have to pay off for them. Mash is going to have to live for the entire fight. I like the match with the blue looks here though. Because just true damage on hit, like every few seconds, which is actually kind of exactly what Ezra wants to do. And it's really good turret damage. Eyes on Baron though here. They did so they did pick up that dragon. So that's number four. It means that we do have an end in sight here. Mid lane's still down, so it's an easy shove here for Coast. And they've got so much control of the map. They just have to take it slow now. This is the team with a ridiculous pick potential. Yeah. And they've got vision control of Baron. It's so hard for Curse Academy facing this situation. Uh, this one ward, though, is really going to help them out a lot. Let's see if Coast actually have any more methods of clearing. They do not. Yeah, there's a ward right there spotting them there. They're going to go for this one anyway. Now, Curse Academy have full vision and full knowledge of this one. And nothing will be gained. Yep, they have to pull right back off. So, Chris Academy able to shove out these uh, super minions here. Really important. Every wave of super minions that they can clear out at this point. Definitely very important. Can buy them some time. And they get a turret. Red buff for mid lane tier 2 turret. Chris Academy actually have to be a little bit careful there. They respect the sheep hook and that turret will not quite fall, I believe. Ezreal sent to the bottom lane to clear another minion wave out, and it's going to create a bot lane push, a slow push now coming yeah, for the coast minions. Good two for one clear right there. They were also able to get one extra ward here on the back side of Baron. So even though they've only fit a couple wards in around the Baron, they're very important ones. One in the river did time out, though. Yeah, the problem is there's just so much vision sort of denial required by Team Coast. There's so much vision around there. They got the scuttler, but that was it. And I mean, this is a team that's supposed to be ahead. Like, I feel like Curse Academy's mission is like, all right, hold on for a while. Like, go back to the split push. We'll be fine. Whereas Coast, like, I feel like they're supposed to be the active team. They had the inhibitor down mid, so yes. Right. And then kind of nothing happened for it. Another yeah. Ezold burned once again for bot lane. Mash doesn't meet the gold, though, so it's just kind of, he's trying to get the minion wave to the right spot. But nothing else really being done here. It should be pushing now. I think, yeah, they've got two extra minions, so the bottom will be building up slowly to yeah. push in their favor. We'll see if they actually try and take that opportunity to go mid or actually control the uh, blue side jungle. I feel like this this particular team, controlling the vision around Baron and that blue side jungle would be the optimal path for them. Just because they have so much burst, uh, if they pick somebody off, it would be huge. And here's the interesting thing, interesting thing as well, is finally Jess has got his Zonia's Hourglass, so he's no longer gonna be an easy target in team. It's actually really good oh. poke by Nash. He's got some real damage on the Haunter there. One third health in the top lane tank. That poke build does some very serious damage. Maybe the auto attack uptime is not very high because there's no crit, but those Qs are great. And they take the opportunity. They do try and close the loop here and clear out all the vision. One inside Baron, though. And Sheep didn't see it there. Same thing. He's going to go for the man drop. Here comes the fight. And he's going to be left taking Baron damage. With Hanser, good ult, good hook, good one for zero. Hanser into the back lines right now. Jess pops the zone as after Deathmark comes in. Now, can he get away from the rest of this? Does flash out, but Cops on the chase gets some good damage. Mash on the chase, but he's getting crit in the face. Such good damage by Cops. Oh. He's one hit from the kill. You can see the value of an eye edge in that fight right there. And now Impaler in the front lines taking so much pain. Shutdown comes in. A hook onto Sheep, and look at all that getting done. Cop picking up another. Even with Saint bursted down at the beginning of the fight, Cops two versus one on yep. AP and AD carries of Team Coast just won them that fight. Cop with that uh, Infinity Edge that you love so yep. much there for you Lucian. You need to buy it and you got the in. Able to two versus one, both damage threats. However, once again, Dragon's already been taken, so there's no real objectives. They have to settle for crabs here. Wow, so not a whole bunch gained. Dragon also in two minutes. They won't even keep vision over it. All right, so I was watching the top side cop uh, pretty much the whole time. So we'll take a look at the bottom side this time around. Saint gets bursted down. Uh, Jezz is going to start the whole thing over here, flashing over the wall. Hanser is taking up. Basically, this is Hanser, the super tank here for Chris Academy, taking up a lot of damage on the bottom side. Oh, and Chris is able to use that Zanya's. King going down. Guardian Angel proc'd. And this is after cop already had the two versus one with the double damage threats, so able to come in and clean up for the team. Yeah, the thing is, Chris has no mana. Like, he has no mana, and and so without mana, he's not a damage source. Like, Ari and Ezreal, we're fighting Cop. Yeah. And then it's like a Jarvan, a Blitzcrank, and a zero mana Lissandra. Like, that's not going to kill a Maokai ever. And because Cop was able to lifesteal tank, 
off of a really great elixir pickup and the bloodthirster like he just wouldn't go down yeah by the way that elixir is ridiculous it's because there are so many illusion. team fights it, it lasts for so long both ad carries rocking that one now but you can even think about getting that one early before you finish your items yeah all right baron started up again well, a lot being done here for this one. Smite battle, though, and Paler is it? around. He gets hooked. That's actually a good thing for them. He doesn't manage to steal. That goes over to Curse Academy. They trade one for uh, one kill so far. Saint in the back line is looking for Jess's. Cop is safe back here. He's going to kill the Ari off. Nice dodge there. But in comes Impaler. Finally fix that one up there. But it's three kills picked up for Team Coast. Ooh, and there's no defense left. This is the tank and the support here for Curse Academy. Coast going to at least get an inhibitor, maybe end the game right now. Problem is they're missing minions right now because there's oh, that one Baron buff minion in the mid lane like holding off the wave right here. They're going to get at least the inhibitor. Now, can they do enough? Bottom is pushing up pretty close. Might be able to swing down there. Or, oh, it's only 4v2 one 4v2 back door. They're going to try for it. Sheep in the front line hooks in Bunny Fufu. But here comes Hauntzer trying to do what he can. The turret's losing a lot of health. Bunny about to go down. They don't want to kill him that hard, though. They want this yeah. turret to go down. There's the one now on to the Nexus itself. Can they knock down Sheep and Master? Low on health, but it's not going to be enough. Nexus goes down, and Coast finds their win in game one. Whew. Yeah. Long one. This is going to be a long day. It is. We had a best of five and then a 50 minute first game here. 50 minutes is really long on yeah. the preseason patch. Yeah, you're still looking at, you know, 35 ish minute games uh, normally, kind of on average. And these guys really went the distance. Uh, a slow start to the game, certainly, but it picked up and these guys just kept trading advantages back and forth. See the coach there with them, kind of talking, saying, here, guys, here's what we need to do next time around. Here's what we've got to fix. Curse Academy, of course, similar talk with their coaches. Yeah, it seemed like the the Pantheon there. This game didn't work out too well for them. The, the lane swaps early meant that neither jungler really had a big early impact. Yeah. And then it was just the invades there. The plays from Sheep in the early and mid game oh, on that Blitzcrank really gave them a lot of control uh, and enabled them to get the early dragons, which having the early dragons, you get to dictate the mid game dragons because you don't want to give away any more to a team that already has a couple stacked up. Right. So it kind of gives you the power to decide when the fights are going to be. But the weird thing is, Curse Academy still did so well despite that. Right. Yeah. First two dragons went to coast. They had like control. They had vision control. And like Curse Academy kept finding ways to make <laughs> great plays. I think part of that was Jess is getting a super late Zonia so he could be picked off so much. Like, Kian went 9 4 and 4 that mm -hmm. game. Like, that's a very good score for a losing team who's down in kills. He made great plays. He really just punished a lot of people. And Cop, pretty much all game, Cop was a huge threat for this team. We, yep. He started off giving a huge amount of power in that bottom lane and drawing a lot of threats down there. Yeah. And then, even in the, in the end game, as we saw during those team fights, he was putting out. Close to optimal DPS pretty much the entire time. Yeah, you bought a Zephyr, which I'm sad about, but it's okay. The rest <laughs> of this, though, like, but, but, like, that's, and I know I harp on it so much, but there was the exact example of why. Like, the poke build is fine. You can go for poke build, and you could see, like, with four Qs, he got haunted to 10% health on Ezreal. Like, mm -hmm. that's a legitimate build, and that's fine, and MASH did that, and he had value from that. But when you get in these, like, prolonged engagements where you're auto attack trading, the crit build will win. And you have to make sure you fight in the right kind of battles so that you're playing to your builds. Right, like you're you're buying strategically, like unique items that work in certain scenarios. You've got to play to those scenarios. The other thing is that it's a really skill-based matchup. The Ari and Ezreal versus Illusion. Yeah. Both Ari and Ezreal miss skill shots in that two versus that's one. Point. So that's really the reason why he was able to two versus one there. Yeah. It's it's something that can go either way. So. I mean, I got I honestly do have to give props to Cop though then for doing that right, kind of carrying that battle, getting a one v two, dodging the skill shots. We saw. A few rips of him, you know, dashing away from a charm, flashing a predicted charm. Like, these are good things, and I think good players do predict skill shots more than they reflex dodge them. So I think that was a good set of plays as well. Yeah. It's good stuff. You always got to be worried about what CC is coming your way as an AD carry. All right. So, um, honestly, a very good series. I Do we have an interview coming up? I throw it over to Dash. We do. Check. Okay, sorry. I didn't, I didn't do that properly. Yes. So we have Dash over with the interview.